Uh, I'm Sean Smith, um, an artist from the North West, um, currently looking at Fiddler's Ferry, uh, while it's being decommissioned and looking at it as a, you know, um, the future of the, the site, what's going to happen with the site. Very, very interested in the industrial north and how it's changing, especially with Halton, how it's changed over the last couple of years, so you know, that's been my main focus in my work. Uh, I'm a teacher as well, uh, teaching Runcorn, I've uh, been there 20 years, uh, so I know the area very well, inspired by uh, a local artist as well called Mike Knowles who was, who was brought up in Warrington and I met him at university and he has a massive influence on the way I work and the way I see artwork introducing me to a lot of uh, different kind of artists encouraged the fact that you should be looking at your local surroundings really as a way of painting Can you tell us a little bit about the the first projects that led on to this? As we started moving back closer to Runcorn and I heard that the Mersey Gateway was being built I wanted to record the new bridge because uh, it was going to obviously bring a lot of work into the town centre and, and the area. I was very interested in the um, production industry, so I wanted to see how that was go how that was going to look on the on the waterfront, how it's going to change the, the landscape in the northwest. Um, so I got in touch with um, the people that are running it. Uh, they took me on site and I kind of documented it through photographs, um, drawings that I could do on site, and basically I kind of recorded the entire build over a three four year period. Uh, resulted in an exhibition that we had was showing um, the Mersey Gateway being built from start to finish, uh, which we showcased at the Brindley and Runcorn. Uh, also, you know, that was a successful exhibition, and it kind of in the background of the Mersey Gateway was Fiddler's Ferry. And it's always been on the kind of the landscape there for the last 50 years. When I heard that it was going to be decommissioned, it felt like a natural progression to start recording that. Um, and that's when I wrote to Lee about getting Lee involved because Lee was very interested in the industrial north himself as a photographer. So that's how one project kind of led into this one. We've got similar interests in the local landscapes and architectural buildings that stand out. When I saw Sean's work, I thought, there's somebody who gets it, as it were. You know, he sees what I see. So we pretty much hit it off artistically straight away, didn't we? Once we saw each other's yeah. work on, through Facebook initially, then he came here and saw it in the flesh and then obviously you can really appreciate it then. So uh, it was great to get a project together from that point. You're uh, more of a fine art photographer, aren't you, where, where Sean's uh, dealing in oil paintings predominantly? Yeah, I mean, I, I, I'm, I got into photography because um, I work all over the Northwest and when I was driving through areas, especially Liverpool, there was a lot of buildings that were being demolished, knocked down, um, neglected um, and they had real character and I just thought there's something in me that thought I've got to capture this before it's gone once it's gone it's gone so that's when I started getting into photography more and more and the more I started doing it I think the more you sort of see um, and a lot of the time when I was I drive to and from down the 62 of course what's the biggest thing anywhere it's Fiddler's Ferry and it just drew me off the motorway as it were with my <laughs> camera towards it um, and I think the first ever photo I took of Fiddler's Ferry was quite a few years ago and it was when all the rapeseed oil was out, the bright yellow and the, 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 the cloud factory as it were was in full steam it was a really still day so the steam was just going straight up into the sky um, and it was the perfect juxtaposition with nature in front of it um, and I got out, got in the field, and after that, it was like, you know, I've got to capture this in every kind of scenario from 30 miles away to, you know, maybe one day even in it, you never know, and everything in between, every kind of weather, um, how it affects people, um, it, how it affects the landscape. Um, it's quite an endless sort of subject matter, really, and a unique one as well. Your work really captures the lightness of steam floating in the sky, which it's kind of a nice contrast with this massive kind of solid structure. Sean, you, you, you come from a family of construction workers, is that right? So that kind yeah, of informed your work? Yeah, my dad was a site agent, uh, run building sites, and from my earliest memory of being, you know, 14, 15, I've always been interested in seeing something being built from start to finish. I've, I've, yeah. I've loved to watch that process, something coming from nothing, and you see what the finished result is. And I've always been kind of been fascinated by that. Um, especially like the moving of the machinery around the site, the kind of activity of the site, the life of the site, you know, the energy that you can see within the site. Um, it's, just, it's just fascinating to watch. 
Um, I'm interested in the kind of uh, the juxtaposition between kind of the natural and the man-made. I think that's quite interesting. Yeah. Um, especially with Fiddler's Face, because like for me, it's like for the last fifty years, it's 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 a it's a part of the landscape. I can't really kind of imagine what it's going to be like when it's gone. Yeah. You know, well, you know, it's going to be a massive thing that's going to be missing. You're going to wasn't your power station there? And it's kind of going to be strange. So kind of. I felt as though and Lee was the same. We needed to record that and capture yeah. that before that's gone, because yeah. you know, in a twenty years' time, no one's going to remember there was a power station there. Well, we we're trying to preserve no, it, aren't we? and it'd be hard for people to convey the scale of of it on the landscape when it's not when it once it's gone, it's gone, and they'll never be able to convey. You know, they can say there was this there, but without images, yeah, um, th th you can't convey that scale through words. There are different approaches to capturing that I think covered the breadth of the experience you've got the the more documentary side and you've got the more textural feel of it as well it's just quite a dirty place isn't it? yeah a place. years and years of work there you know you can you can see like some of the pipe work in there can't you when we've been in there you know massive grey build up of grime over like the last 50 years but yeah. you've got yellow bars just appearing out of nowhere where it's like colour coded in the, in the station what, what did it feel like when you first got to got to go on site <laughs> like kids in the candy shop, weren't we? Yeah, yeah. yeah. It was amazing. A, I was a big privilege to be able to go there because up until Sean had um, contacted them and a lot of negotiating, nobody, um, even really but some people who were there, could film or photograph anything as such. I mean, it, it was still pretty much almost like a state secret sort of yeah. thing, the technology behind it, even though it was obviously from the early 70s. Um, so, that was unique access that no one else had um, so it was you know you walked in you thought this is special this you know no one else can do this um, I mean he took us up to the tallest chimney stack he said to us like he said it takes five minutes to get to the top there's a small little cage you had to get into and me and Lee are pretty much face to face like this and there's other guys there's two guys are standing next to us and he said to us hope it doesn't break down and I said <laughs> what, what do you mean break down he said well we're going to go up here. He said last week, he said it broke down and it fell 12 foot while still in it. And me and Lee were a little crazy uh, going, you know, I'm not, I'm, not, I'm not keen on this, but we got to the top and it was just absolutely fantastic, wasn't it? It was what? Yeah. The most yeah. Amazing, one of the most ex amazing experiences. I was terrified on the top you being afraid of heights. To the, the brick. I was like, that was. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> at least walking around it like that, it's nothing. Well, but it's, like, you know, it was funny, it, wasn't it? It's odd because, you know, I, I'm not the best with heights, but. I don't know, sum it in me, man. It luckily switched that off, and it was just like, I've got, I, you know, I've got five minutes here, and that's it forever. No one else has got this chance. Um, I've got to get some shots, I've got to get a bit of film, some footage. You know, this is it. So I, I forgot, it's how daft, but you, you, you're looking down <laughs> on a cooling tower, <laughs> a massive cooling tower, and you're looking down on it, not up at it. And then you, you could see Liverpool Cathedral, you know, in the distance. And you know, but I was just fo it, it focused me completely. And what was amazing as well was like the wind up there. You know, when you went round the, 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 to the estuary side, the strength of the wind. Yeah. Like, you know, it was we had to have the straps on our heads and we would have yeah. put the helmets yeah. on to stop it coming uh, off. And it was quite a warm day, but up there it was quite cold, wasn't it? Yeah, and the thing as well was, of course, up there that they had like the sulfur dioxide, didn't they? And we had like little alarms on and then they started beeping because the sulfur or whatever built up a little bit the wind had blown it in our direction so all these beep 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 came going off didn't they yeah. it's like right get in get in get in <laughs> it's yeah. like a war zone or something we ran back in again until it went down and then we could go back outside again so uh, it was almost too un overwhelming to be actually scared yeah it was it get just it. focusing yeah. You know, I mean, I, I'm not great up a ladder as such, and we're up there, probably the tallest structure in Cheshire. Yeah. Yeah. But I have no fear. It's weird, you know. You can't put me, you know. I don't know how, but it's even. It, I think it's near. Is it eight, near eight hundred feet, isn't it, or something like that? I think so, yeah. And it's got yeah. air. It's got airplane lights on it. So yeah. yeah. <laughs> Stopping from crashing into it, and we was just like, we had to get up there. We had to experience it, didn't we? I think you said like there's probably less than hundred people who've ever been to the yeah. top of there as well you know ever it's a pretty big privilege yeah definitely i think one of the great things about your work and this and this exhibition and obviously we're all sick and tired of looking at screens after the last yeah year plus it you've really captured the scale of fiddler's ferry you know it it, it is it is difficult to convey how big it is 
with a picture but you've managed it I, I think part of the reason why it works so well with Sean because as an artist uh, I know quite a lot of artists but I don't know any other artist who can paint to his scale um, and capture scale as well as Sean so it's the perfect artist to capture that um, and as a structure I mean it's the nearest thing to when you go inside one of those calling towers the pre it's like being in a cathedral like at yeah. Lincoln or York in its own way um, the scale the grandeur um, even though it's an industrial build it was built to do a purpose because of the scale it takes it beyond that purpose um, so to try and convey that to someone who maybe has only seen it from a distance or has never seen it but just seen images online um, you know it's important to try and do that yeah. Yeah, we wanted to kind of give uh, the viewer the feeling what we felt in the station because we were quite overwhelmed as well we were walking around weren't we and it was just like absolutely fantastic and having the privilege to actually climb up and go into one of the cooling towers and actually be inside it it was that was, that was spectacular wasn't yeah. it and we wanted to kind of bring that it, across it to it the viewer it was almost we? sort of spaceship like as it were you know mm. it, that's what it was like because you walk on like a jetty above these like platelets that heat up and it was always like being in the spaceship of alien or something yeah, it was, it was, yeah. and it's all sculptured on the sides and then you look up and it's a perfect circle like a like the planet earth above you yeah yeah it was otherworldly inside that. another thing about this project that's a bit different is the company you run it sse they seem unusually open about two artists approaching them and then um, they've just given you complete access haven't they to to the yeah. site, they they obviously recognised that it was important to to capture it. Yeah, it, it, it's the end of an era that spanned hundreds of years from when you know coal was first <laughs> dug and, and used in a, in, a, in a small scale. You know, I mean, this country, the, the the modern part of this country exists basically because of coal. You know, in, in heat, in, 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 in being able to create structures is the complete end of an era, which is rare, you know, in, in, a, in someone's lifetime to see the, the ultimate end of an era. Um, I mean, a, a lot of the, some of the workers, you know, they're saying like, you know, that this power station is, is what provided the power to hospitals, vast swathes of the population. And although obviously it's not, it, I suppose, a, a green energy as such, when they built it, it was built out away from the towns and the cities yeah. and generated the electricity back to them rather than them burning the coal themselves and all that pollution residing within the town and the city. So, you know, it, it did clean the air where people lived. SSC were quite keen to kind of record the heritage sort of value of the place and, you know, some sort of legacy we wanted mm. in terms of it, the artwork and the photography and the drawings, the paintings. Yeah. We wanted to, to, you know, to celebrate really because the, the, the station served uh, the North West for the last 50 years yeah. and we wanted to celebrate the staff who worked there as well haven't they because they're like, they are like a big family so it's one of the best places I've ever worked mm. and then I'd be painting in the canteen work on the big paints some of the big paintings and they would come and talk to us wouldn't they and that would be fed into the paints they'd tell me stories about what it was like working there or they'd tell me what certain what certain parts uh, were being built like 50 years ago and how the Mersey water was a lot cleaner because of what fiddlers had done so, mm -hmm. so they'd be pumping the water back into the Mersey and they'd be cleaning on what they'd be taking away so it's um yep. SSC were quite keen to support us weren't they with um recording the station yeah. the, the staff were proud of working there as well you know they, they, they had a pride in producing the energy that by the community for tens and tens of thousands of people exactly. and what what surprised me as well well not surprised but obviously as a structure um, you know there'll be obviously people it's an eyesore you know good riddance as it were and you'd expect that um, but when we had a bit of a pop-up show at Warrington yeah. the overwhelming um, response was I'd be sad when it's gone you know it's our it, it's our big monument as such yeah. for this yeah. area we, we, we don't have any it's like well I live in stock but we've got the viaducts well that I think is, this is Fiddler's Ferry's Warrington and, and yeah. the, the surrounding area run yeah. with the, it's their um, industrial heritage that a massive scale that there's nothing else in the whole of the North West like it yeah. um, and when that's gone there won't be anything else 
you know, like it. There's even like there's one lady who said um, that she'd lived in New Zealand for years. She, and she came back to Liverpool Airport, and she said as soon as she, I saw the towers, I felt I was at home. You know, and that's yeah, so that's amazing. That mm -hmm. you know, so, yeah, it is important to. That's how important yeah. it is to preserve the images of it before it is gone. The more you learn about it, the more the more amazing it is. You know, and the like you said earlier, like the hoops you have to jump through to to keep it running and all the all the problems they had to overcome but in a similar way you two as artists have, have jumped through some pretty amazing poops the last day that it was in full operation i got down there in the morning i think it was around february time and it was literally perfect conditions and i'd been going 30 40 50 times and they've never been as perfect and this was the last day the last chance to capture it with, with all the steam and all its glory all the drama and the mist was there um, so again it was like you know this mist isn't going to be around forever um, and and so I was taking the photos from the ground level but I had the drone up in the sky at the same time and I wanted that perfect time because I wanted to capture the, the steam and the mist but I didn't want the two to blur I wanted them separate I wanted the towers coming out of the mist with the steam separate and the light being right and it's like you know this is the, the last chance to mm -hmm. ever get the, what I want and it's like you know there's no plan you know it's not like oh I'll try again tomorrow there wasn't a tomorrow and the window to get those images I probably got about photos wise about maybe 10 that I was really happy with um, and footage wise you know good few minutes but I had literally 20 minutes 15 to 20 minute window to get what I needed and that was it forever there was never going to be that window again um, and you know, I'd been there so many times waiting for this magic, yeah. and this was the la on the last day it, it happened. You know, yeah, it's the last final burn, wasn't it? Yeah. Only for the last bit of coal. Yeah. yeah, so much of photography is about waiting and <laughs> it, it, being it, ready yeah. for when. You know, and you've got it, to it, be it's knowing straight away. It, 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 it's obvious photography because it's knowing when to take a picture um, is, is important when not to take a picture. There's a lot of times you can go to the same place again and again and again and you won't bother pressing the button and then you go one time and the sun's in the right place there's a shadow in the right place someone's walking past in the right place the composition and you can see the composition coming together and then you, you're like yeah it's coming it's coming it's like got you like that yeah. and you're looking it's like a precious thing and you, you check, did they get it you know yeah phew, i got it you know um and if the light's right you can go around and you could get 10 20 pictures within an hour sometimes i can go again and again and again to the same place and not even bother taking the camera out just look and think nah the magic's not there yeah. it's not worth there's nothing worth you know capturing sean you um you had a memorable adventure in some mud didn't you when you, you nearly you nearly got washed to sea or something <laughs> I was supposed to meet Lee um, early morning, about four in the morning in the middle of the summer, wasn't it? Yeah. And we were going to capture the sunrise. Um, and this was uh, just a couple of months before it was due to close, wasn't it? Um, uh, so I got there for four, four o'clock in the morning. Lee, Lee couldn't come because he had a breakdown. So I'm there. Vehicle uh, breakdown, <laughs> not, not, not an emotional one. <laughs> so I get to the Mersey estuary and um, I crawl out to get the, get the, the, the composition I wanted, trying a couple of sketches out, took my camera with me, and I thought, well, well, time's getting on now, I need to get back, you know, it's like about six o'clock in the morning. And I thought, well, I'll go a bit of a shortcut and misjudged it. And I kind of ended up going knee deep in, in the mud flaps and kind of getting stuck in them. And my camera got stuck, my sketchbook got stuck. I was up to my knees in it. I come home, was all up my arms, just like, and I come home and I got a, got a bit of a bit of telling off off the missus. So like, you're not going, you're not going in the house, you're going to go to the studio bathroom, get tidy in there. It's like kind of... I was getting a bit worried though because I was, I was getting stuck for a while and I thought, oh, I'm, they're going to look fine to me here. <laughs> well, no, yeah. one, no, no one knows I'm here for a start, apart from yeah. my wife and, and Lee stuck on the motorway yeah. somewhere. So I'm like, I see it. there'll yeah, be a pencil the floating on the Mersey <laughs> going past them. To yeah. How's that here? <laughs> so if any artists are watching this and yeah. thinking, right, Have I'm going to go first. and document some <laughs> kind of industrial thing, just tell a friend where you're going, you know, yeah. next yeah. time. Yeah. Yeah. And we went in a boat, didn't we, as well? Yeah, that was a little boat down the river. You, you, you weren't so, so happy with the boat either. <laughs> <laughs> that was a bit rocky. That was a bit winter. rocky, that wasn't yeah. it? Yeah. 
Yeah, we got in touch with Fiddler's um, Sailing Club because uh, we mainly wanted to look at Fiddler's from the vantage point of being on the water. So they were they, they were quite happy, happy obliged, and they took us out and spent yeah. you know was it a good half day? Was it on the water? Yeah, wasn't they were it? really helpful, really helpful the project. We got some footage that we wouldn't have been able to get, you know, otherwise because of where were the river bends um, on the other side of the river to get that aspect. There's no, it's all marsh. There's just not really much way of getting to it. But on the boat, we could get it. It's an old thing because I. You say you get obsessed about wanting to try a different angle, a different approach, a different view of it. So the amount of times I've like had a map and thought, right, I want a view of it from there, but That's it's okay. like <laughs> unfortunately, like the map doesn't show like marshes and streams and you know nature, you know things in the way. Um, but on the boat, we yeah, you know we, we we did it. We got we got through it. Got through the barrier. And yeah. they kept swapping, they kind of like, each boat had a different speed, didn't it? And yeah. they'd, they'd pull up in the middle of the Mersey and we'd have to climb from one boat to another boat. And then Lee's daughter got to ride, you know, drive one. Yeah. <laughs> she actually loved it, yeah, didn't she? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Zooming up the, you know, the Mersey estuary. <laughs> it was a good um, day as well because the way the wind was, the, uh, from, the, uh, from the tower, um, the, 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 the stack, um, it was really, really slow. And it was going horizontal. Uh, it's almost like almost like curving over, yeah. wasn't it? And it went for like a mile across, um, which I hadn't captured it exactly like that before. And then at the same time, there's a flock of geese coming over as well, which I managed to get. So I was happy with, with that one. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, we need to do that again, don't we? When in the in like sort of summer, so we did it in the middle of November. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> it's quite cold as well, wasn't it? I'll have to give them their memory card back actually, I'll probably be banned from the sailing <laughs> <the> club. <laughs>